Hello and welcome to another S3 Arts how-to video. Today we are going to be making air dry jack-o'-lantern boxes. And this is another video that corresponds with the S3 Arts creative classes that are brought to your local libraries. So in our bag you have of course your clay, a battery powered tea light, and a small wooden popsicle stick tool that we'll be using to cut and shape some of our clay. So first we'll set everything aside and open up our clay. Now this is the same air dry clay that was used for the dragon skull project. This is a paper-based air dry clay, 100% washable, and of course, air drying. So when we finish our project, it'll be able to dry and harden on its own so that we don't have to put it in an oven or anything like that. The first thing I'm going to do is put the clay ball between my hands and push it together while I roll it. I wanna change it from this circular ball of clay to a cylinder shape. And once you've done that, we're going to take two fingers worth of clay and we're gonna pinch and twist to break off this bottom portion. And we'll just set that aside for now. This is what's going to turn into the top stem lid portion of the box. So we'll set that there and I'll set that aside now going to go back make this a nice cylinder you can even set it flat and push onto the table or whatever surface you're working on all right there we go and it doesn't have to be perfect in fact throughout this whole process if it looks a little lumpy or bumpy that's okay because we're going to be making a spooky pumpkin it doesn't have to look perfectly round or smooth all right so we're gonna start by using our pinch pot method. So on the top of my clay, I'm going to use my thumb and push into the middle and rotate just a little bit. That gives me a nice little dimple in there. And I'm going to put my thumb inside the dimple I just made and my fingers on the outside and I will pinch and twist. So I'm going to go all the way around. I'm just pinching that clay, which is going to open up that dimple, make it a little wider. Now what I'm going to do is do that all the way down to make this whole cylinder flare out. And as I'm going, I can push and pull that clay any direction I want to help me shape my pumpkin. But as I go, I want to keep it a nice consistent thickness. If it gets too thin, it can crack and break. We want it to be nice and strong so that when it dries, it can uh, stand up on its own and we don't have to worry about anything breaking off. So I'm just going to push again to get that same small dimple on the inside, then pinch a little deeper. So as I'm spinning, I'm pushing my thumb. Now, if you are get to the point where your thumb can't get deep enough, you can switch to your pointer finger, your middle finger, whatever it takes to get down to the bottom. All right, very good. So it should now be like a cup. It's solid on the bottom and it's hollow most of the way through. So this might be a very nice cup, but we want it to look like a pumpkin. So we need to make it both wider and maybe even taller. That's up to you. You get to choose the shape. Pumpkins come in all different shapes and sizes. But to do that, I'm gonna switch and have two fingers on the inside and pinch the outside with my thumb. And just like before, I pinch and I twist. And I'm gonna spin and move downward. And if it gets to the point where you can't reach, you may have to switch your hand so that your thumbs on the inside or the fingers on the inside, whatever works best for you. 
And we want to get that thickness nice and consistent. And we do that for a few reasons. One, it looks nice. We always want our projects to look nice. But two, it will help this dry evenly. And the more even it dries, the stronger it will be when it dries. So now let's keep going and let's start making it more of that pumpkin shape. So what I'm doing is pinching along the bottom and I'm actually hooking my fingers in there and pushing out. So when I, instead of pushing straight down, I'm now pushing outward in whichever direction I want to switch the shape. So it's just slowly, slowly pushing and moving that clay around until it starts to round out. You can already see it's starting to flare in the middle a little more, starting to get more of a pumpkin shape, looks a little less like a cup. And it's okay that it's not perfect just yet because we still have a lot of steps we're gonna do and every little bit that we do will get us closer to that pumpkin shape. And you can see I'm using two hands here to push out either side, just to try to make it a little more symmetrical so it's more even on each side. And it's okay if it's not. Pumpkins come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes it's more exciting when they are um, a little more rough and bumpy anyway. All right. So, once you are happy with your shape, and you can play around with it as much as you want, if it gets to where you don't quite like the shape, you can even ball it back up and start over if you wish. Um, hopefully you decide you like the shape and you don't feel you need to start over, but that's always an option. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with the shape of mine. So now, on the opening, I need to create these four points, one, two, three, and four, which are going to help hold the lid in place. All right, see how that fits right on there? And it won't fit perfectly, and that's okay, because that's just going to make nice spots where some more light can come through. So I'm going to choose the top, the bottom, and the two sides. And what I'm going to do is pinch the clay together just a little bit to create this four-leaf clover kind of shape. And you'll see, just from me doing this, the pumpkin's already starting to round out on top. And notice, I'm not pushing it together right away. I'm doing several small pinches to help slowly move that clay. If I did one big one really fast, it may rip and tear. Now, on this inside, I'm going to just push and fold these in-between sections down and then up inward. And that allows me to move these four points closer, closing the top of the shape and giving it that nice round kind of shape. And again, every pumpkin's gonna look a little different. Yours may be taller or shorter, wider, thinner. It doesn't matter. Every pumpkin is going to look a little bit different. Okay, now what I like to do along each one of these points, I want to go through on the inside and push out just a little extra. So pumpkins always have different sections, and you can see it on this finished one, right? Each area is sort of its own section of pumpkin, and we're going to make these look um, a little nicer. Right now it kind of looks like a, a ball that has some sort of crab claws on it or something. And what I'm going to do is take that wooden stick. Now with the point, I'm going to go on either side of those four spots and make a nice smooth line all the way down. So on both sides. So you should be making eight lines. And if you decide maybe you don't want that many or maybe you want more, that's okay. But I'm using it just like a pencil in drawing the lines onto it. So 
So I'm going to go all the way around. All right, there we go. And I found a little spot where I have sort of a little indent. I can just put my finger back in and kind of push and smush it around to get how I want. Okay, now that it's in sections, let's make it look a little nicer. Let's cut them a little deeper. So I'm going to turn the tool sideways. So I was using it up and down using just the point. Now I'm going to use it sideways to get a little more, um, cover a little more area, pull off a little more clay. And I'm going to push just a little harder too. So you can already see there's a pretty big difference from my first line to my second line. And the deeper you go, the more shadow you'll see. And that'll really stand out. You'll be able to see that depth a little more. And it's okay if every line's not perfect. We can always go back, smooth the clay back out, and make new lines inside of it also. There we go. See how that's already making those sections separate. Looks really nice. And then, once you get all the way around... I'll show you what we'll do. We're going to use the tool again to really refine these. So now that you've gone through and you've dug each section out, take that tool and lightly on the top area of the line, almost like using it as a paintbrush, just push down those edges. This is gonna, instead of leaving that kind of square edge, this will round it out, make it look a little more natural, and make it look more like a pumpkin because we don't want these harsh rectangular sections. We want these nice um, sort of organic rounded areas. And we're going to do this on both sides. So just on the very top where I cut that line in, I'm going to slide the tool down lightly just to pick up some of that extra clay that got pushed to the surface and it takes out some of the little bumps and areas that kind of got pulled where maybe we didn't want them to. You can also take your finger and just sort of very lightly brush all those off and push it down. Okay now we've handled our pumpkin quite a bit so we want to actually go through push on the inside bump out any areas that got flattened Try to get it to the final pumpkin shape that you're happy with. And everybody's might be a little different. And you can go through, kind of reconstitute these different points here. Especially after handling it that much, they may have got uh, moved around. There we go. Pretty happy with that. Now, look around your pumpkin and decide which area would look nice to have the jack-o'-lantern's face on it. And when we make the face, we're not just going to push and cut in like we would with a regular pumpkin. Our air dry clay is a little softer, so that wouldn't work quite as well. What I'll do instead is lightly draw the face on there using my tool. So I will Give him some nice triangle eyes, and I'm just very lightly scratching that into the surface. I'm not cutting it out yet. And you can make the face however you want. It doesn't even have to be a jack-o'-lantern face. Maybe you want to make it look like an animal or something like that. So, give him a triangle nose. And we'll give him those nice square jack-o'-lantern teeth. You can do this however you want. The goal is just to go nice and slow. We're going to scrape it out in layers so that we don't push through further than we want. Okay, so now that I have everything drawn out, I'm just going to go over those lines just like I did for the pumpkin sections. And I'll go over it two times or three times, 
four times, whatever it takes to slowly dig this out until it pops through. Now, if I just pushed all the way through, that would push and pull that the outside surface of the pumpkin with it. But since I went nice and slow, I only have to move and push a very small amount of clay at a time. And any extra clay that pops off can kind of scoop it up and stick it in our extra piece that we set aside in the beginning. So I'm gonna go through, cut out all of my different parts and see so you can kind of pull and lift, almost like you're shoveling that extra out. Whatever works, as long as you go nice and slow. You want to do this as three or four cuts. Definitely not just one big, strong, aggressive cut. All right. And you don't have to worry too much about how nicely uh, your shapes come out here. Because we're going to go through... Just cut everything else at once and then fix everything up at once. Because if we cut out one eye and then tried to fix it and make it perfect, then we cut out the second eye, we can go through and accidentally mess up our first one. So if we cut everything out, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, then we can just fix everything all at once too. Now the mouth, especially if you made a big mouth like I did, you want to go even slower. Be very careful to make sure we don't push that whole face in. Just like if we were carving a real jack-o'-lantern, if we take away too much of the pumpkin of the face, it can't hold up its own weight. I'm just very slowly digging away, trying to make it nice and even so that not one area breaks through before the rest of the area is ready. There we go. And if you have a lot of teeth and things especially, it'll take even longer just to carefully dig it out. But you'll be happy you took your time so that we don't pull off any teeth or anything. And you can see now a little bit what it looks like all the way through. Okay, so now that everything's cut out, we're going to use the side of our popsicle stick to just push and smush and smooth out any lumpy bumpies, anything that we don't want on there. Just kind of refining the face so that it looks like a nice jack-o'-lantern face and remember they all look a little bit different so don't worry if yours doesn't look like mine one fun thing i always recommend with anything but especially with pumpkins if you want it to look a little more fun a little more playful you can give it eyebrows like this guy here so let's just make a little curved line a little frowny face above each eye. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. So once you have your pumpkin shaped how you like, you have your face how you want, you can actually set it aside. But I'm not going to set it up and down like this. I'm actually going to lay it on its back so that I don't have to worry about the weight of the face pushing downward and flattening the mouth. Now, something you'll want to do if you haven't already, set it down flat and just tap it on the surface. Give it five or six little taps. That will flatten out the bottom to make sure it sits flat because we don't want a pumpkin that's wiggly and rocks. So I'm going to set that pumpkin down aside here and I'm going to gather up all my extra pieces and roll it into a ball. So I picked up all the scraps I cut off from the face and added it to it. Now, I'm going to make the top part, the stem. And the stem is going to sit on top of the pumpkin between those four areas. So, I'm going to start the same way with my thumb twisting it a little bit to create a little dimple. It looks like an eyeball. 
but instead of pushing inward and making it taller, I'm going to push outward and make them longer. So I'm going to make four sections again, turning it into this kind of clover shape. Then I'm going to pinch along the outside and see how it's already starting to pull out. And I'll do that same thing again. Dividing it into four sections, pinching it together. Then, once they're starting to get, uh, starting to flare outward, you can grab from the bottom and just go back and forth until it starts to get that nice stem shape. So, it doesn't matter too much what the stem looks like. Stems are even more unique than the pumpkins. But we need to have these four areas to line up with the four on top. And you can check at any time to see, are they long enough? Are they big enough? Do they need to uh, be moved in a certain way? But we want it to fit on there. And remember, it won't be a perfect fit. And that's okay, especially once these dry, they will shrink a little bit. But if we push and smush it enough, we should be able to get it to be a very close fit. And you can push both ways. I can push the stem and the pumpkin to fit. Now, we want to make sure we're not going to push too hard and smush our pumpkin but we'll just go back and forth and play with it a little bit. And once you have it close or where you need it to be, I'm just going to push and smush along the stem, twisting and pinching and twisting and pinching to make it nice and tall. And then you can play around a little bit with what the stem's like. This one here is kind of twisted and goes to the side. It can go straight up. You can use your tool to put in a couple of grooves similar to how we did on the surface of the pumpkin. All right. It can just be however you like. Maybe the stem's very big, maybe it's very small. Okay, so the last thing is gonna be to make sure we can put our light in it. Now, there's two ways to do this. We can make sure the light fits into the top and the easiest way is to have the light actually go in sideways and twist upward. So if your opening is big enough, you can simply be done and have it slide in like that. Or, as we did with this guy, we can cut a circle in the bottom. Now remember, this clay is going to shrink. This air dry clay has a lot of water in it. And so... We want to make sure our circle, our opening for our light, is going to be big enough to fit it. What I like to do is take that little candle light, push and rotate it a little bit. And that will make a nice circle. That's how big it is. Take my tool, just like I did with the mouth. Go around it. Nice and... Nice and... Uh, and soft, I'm not pushing all the way through, but I go around it four or five times until it starts to break through. Nice and thin layers. And once it cuts through, just make sure it's taken off all the way around. And it might not come out in one piece, that's okay. You can just kind of pull and get whatever left over. Okay, so now that I cut the circle out, and you can see all the way through the pumpkin now, I'm going to take my two thumbs. I'm avoiding the mouth area because I don't want to stretch that out. But I'm just trying to open up this circle a little bit. And that's to make sure that it's bigger than the candle. So you can put the candle in there, and you should be able to wiggle it around. If you're not sure if it's going to fit... We can make it even bigger. All right. So now we have this extra clay. You can either just set it aside, or if you want to do something kind of fun, you can turn this into a stem or a leaf. Um, let's try to turn this into a leaf. And at this point, 
you may want to get some water. We're going to use just a small, small, small amount of water. And the very end, and we're going to use it to kind of polish everything up. But if you're going to choose to make an extra little detail with that extra clay, like a stem or a leaf, how I'm doing here, and you can just push and smush it around. You can use your tool. This is all up to you just to make it fun, make it a little more unique. But with just a tiny amount of water, I'm actually going to use just one finger to apply my water. I'm going to use my tool, put a little X where I want my leaf to go. Put a little X on my leaf. Then with one finger, dip into water and put water on both parts. So I dip in, put the water on, kind of rub it around. I dip in, put it on the other X, rub it around. Notice I did that twice. Um, and actually, I'm going to connect the leaf in a lower portion here too. So water on both sides, water on both sides second time since this is a water or a paper and water clay that water on there is going to work like glue so i'm lightly pushing it together and you'll see some liquid clay that will then harden and become all one piece so now my stem has this fun little leaf on it i'm going to just cut some veins into the leaf just like before, I do two thin cuts instead of one thick one. And then that will sit right on top. Now, before you are done, double check your pumpkin. Everything is how you want it because once it's hardened, you will not be able to change it anymore. Make sure that light still fits in there. You can turn it on to get an idea of how your jack-o'-lantern will light up. You can't see the light too well right now. It's kind of dark. Um, and then the very last step is to take your finger again like a paintbrush with that water. Just one finger dip into the water and rub up and down on the clay. And you'll see almost instantly that clay will start to smooth out. It'll be nice and polished. It'll make uh make your pumpkin less rough less 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 bumpy and it will help make it look a little more realistic pumpkins are typically smooth not always they may have some bumps and things on them okay so as you're finishing your pumpkin or maybe you have it exactly how you want what we're going to do just like with our other projects is bag them up but we don't want the pumpkin to sit up and down because that mouth can close. So I'm going to sit the pumpkin on its back. I'm going to leave my stem separate. Then you can use a paper bag or a garbage bag. Any kind of plastic will work great. Uh, you can even take the bag from the clay and drape it over it. We're going to let that um, our clay sit in the bag overnight. Tomorrow morning, you can lift the bag up. You'll notice there's water on the surface of your pumpkin. Let it dry up. It should only take an hour or two. And then you should have an all the way dry, ready to go pumpkin. It can be painted with any kind of paint. Craft paints work great. And um, you will have a jack-o'-lantern. Now, one last little tip. If it dries too much, and your light doesn't fit in it. You can very carefully, even with that same popsicle stick, let me get the dry one here, you can kind of shave and scrape the dry pumpkin off, but you wanna go very slow to not crack it. But that should make enough where you can push the light in there. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you, did uh, If you picked up the clay from your library and you weren't able to join us for the live meeting, I hope you were able to use this video to finish up your project at home. Thank you. Have a good day.